Welcome aboard the story ship. Permission to come aboard granted. everyone. Captain Sean here. I'm so glad to be back with you today. Why, we've been very busy. We launched our first virtual show, Fairy Godfather and the Wand of Dreams. They're highly interactive adventures. You can find out more about them at thestoryship.com. Perfect for libraries and summer camps and school. You can even do them at home. Well, I promised you a special guest this week, and he's here. Bobby Norfolk. <laughs> three-time Emmy Award winner. He's also a Parents' Choice Award winner for his CDs. He's got lots of books available through August House Publishing. I'll have links at the website and I'll tell you more at the end of the show where you can get his books and his recordings. He's come to us to tell us a, another fractured fairy tale. This story is the traditional Red Riding Hood, but told with a, a lot of twists. I think you'll really enjoy it. Here's Bobby now. You've heard of the story of Little Red Riding Hood. There's a French version and a German version. We're going to do the updated version, 2020. Now, Naomi Bell took storyteller in Washington State. She did the original version of this fractured fairy tale. And I asked her if I could play with this piece. And she said, play away, play away. So let's play. Our Little Red Riding Hood owns a Corvette Stingray automobile. Oh yeah, you old heads, you know what I'm talking about. Young heads, Google it. Now she had a car, guess what color it was? You got it, red. Vanity Place even said that. She called a flat, boom, uh-oh. She saw a service station. They said it would be three hours before she could get that car fixed. The trains weren't running, busing weren't running. Oh, she missed the last bus, so she put on her hiking shoes and she's hiking across town. The wolf saw her. Let's teach the wolf an important lesson in this story of Little Red Riding Hood rap. A one, a two, a one, a two. A once upon a time there lived in the wood a boss little girl named Riding Hood. I don't mean blue, I don't mean green, I don't mean future or aquamarine. I said red, 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 red. Red, red, red riding hood. Granny threw the back was shopping one day. Rip took us some goodies and a tube of Ben Gay. The buses aren't running, the vets in the shop. I hop it, the granny is a clip of the clock. I say clock, 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 clock. Hit the clock. Happy the granny's singing a song. Big bear Herbie Wolf came along. Hey, a little girl, what's your hurry today? Get lost, said Red, and she went on the way, but the wolf beat. Red, the granny's pad, threw her in the closet and got in the bed. When Red got there, she was really gross. Thought to see a first face granny with a big long snout, bloodshot eyes, big sharp teeth, big pie belly, and stinky feet. Come closer, my dear, said the wolf in disguise. All the better, said Red. For your surprise, little Red jumped the Twinkie up his nose, gum in his hair, stepped on his toes. With one big kick, he was out on his tail. All the way down the road, you can hear him well. Now, wolves like that don't do too good when they pick on girls like a riding hood. I don't mean blue. I don't mean green. Don't mean future or aquamarine. I said that Red. Was so Red. Cool. Red. Red. So Bobby. Red, Tell us how you red, go about red, making red, a fractured red. fairy tale. I went to a library and I found folk tales and fairy tales on the 398.2. And within that section of magic, I call it, I took those stories and I used them like silly putty. I just molded them and weaved them into new caricatures, into new ideas. And I took those Thank ideas you, and I awesome. recreated the effects Bobby that I needed for right a fractured fairy to tale. Some scary stories. We got time for one more story. This is another fractured fairy tale too. It's the big bad wolf's view of what happened with Little Red Riding Hood from Upson Lee Elementary. (laughs) 
I know you've heard the story of Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. He says that's not what really happened. Yeah, I saw a mocking ground town and someone yelled, Hey, there goes that big bad wolf that stole food from Little Red Riding Hood. Reporters started swarming him to get pictures and ask him questions. The wolf switched and lived out in the country with his wife and two children. His job was working at animal shelter. He took care of sheep, bunnies, and especially little pigs. One day, Swizzin worked at the animal shelter for 12 hours straight and needed a break. Hey boss, can I have my lunch break now? The boss's face glowed as he responded. No, get back to work. By the time Swizzin left his office, he was thinking of the boss as Scrooge. Later that day, I was starved. After work, I walked out and I saw this delicious looking pig. I knew the shelter was full, so I took it home with me. As I walked in the door, my family squealed with delight. The pig died of fright, so naturally we ate it. The boss found out and fired me. Swizzin was walking home from his former job when he overheard Little Red Riding Hood and her mother having a conversation. I finished with my sweet cherry pie. It's cooling on the windowsill. Why don't you come with me to the store to get some whipped cream? Come on, Mom. Can I finish this game? You know I have to be home in time to fix supper for your Dad. Yes, Mom. Little Red Riding Hood and her mother drive off in their Suburban. As I passed by, I smelled the cherry pie. Just at that time, a gust of wind blew the pie out of the window. I ran to catch it. I was just trying to save the pie from hitting the ground, but I dropped it, and it broke into crumbs, so I ate it. Swizzin knew he still needed food for his family, so he continued walking through the country. Swizzin came to Granny's house and knocked on the door. Granny opened the door. Excuse me, but I need some f food for my family. I just lost my job at the animal shelter. Oh, I see. Come on in. It's too cold and rainy. You just make yourself at home in my bed, and I'll get you some dry clothes. See? I promise. Granny did tell me to make myself at home and lie down in her bed. Oh, and you'll get to meet my granddaughter. Here she comes now. The phone rang. Granny left the room, and Little Red Riding Hood entered the house. Granny, are you here? I brought you a basket full of food. Little Red Riding Hood walked into the bedroom and saw Swizzin. Granny, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with. And your teeth, Granny. All the better to greet you with. See, Little Red Riding Hood misunderstood what Swizzin was saying. She thought he said, all the better to eat you with. So Little Red Riding Hood ran away as fast as she could. Granny walked in the room and told me she was taking me to court. Of course, just like anyone else, I got scared. I instantly started thinking about my wife and kids. Little questions started popping in my mind. How, how would they live? What will they eat? Where, where would they sleep? Will they miss me? You should have thought of that earlier. They went out to the car and got in. They were halfway down the road and Granny blindfolded Swision. I asked, where are we going? But all I heard was the roar of the engine. Then Swizzin felt the car stop. He got out of the car. He was still blindfolded. And then he heard the roar of the crowd. The first thing I thought was that people were protesting about me. Then Granny took off the blindfold and I was at a Minnesota Timberwolves basketball game. Mr. Swizzin, will you be the mascot for my team? Yes, I would love to be your mascot. I need a job. That's why I walked out of the room when I was talking on the telephone. I didn't want you to hear me talking about this. Now I am a mascot and shoot granny shots for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Honest. I thought there was something fishy about that wolf at the Minnesota basketball games. Guys, I've had such great fun today. You can find Bobby Norfolk's CDs and books through his website at Bobby Norfolk. Dot com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-N-O-R-F-O-L-K dot com. I've had a great time with you guys. Visit us again online at thestoryship.com. We hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for listening.